This is a Sutotal production. Hello, surveyors. Uh, Dr. Nettles coming at you. Um, so for this, this will be our second practice video for Chapter 5. Um, one thing to also uh, kind of notice here, right? So uh, in this one, uh, we're kind of expanding on what we did in the previous video where we just balance the equations. Now we're actually going to use amounts of our reactants and or products um, in order to actually do some calculations and figure out stuff about our other species present in the reaction. So um, let's look at what we got here. It says, firstly, we've got if 17 grams of magnesium iodide were consumed in the reaction below, how many grams of silver iodide would be produced? Now, if you watched the previous video, you might notice that this reaction looks very similar to the very first reaction we did in the previous video. That's not a coincidence. Okay, um, you'll notice that for all of these. Okay, we've seen all of these before in the previous video. So one thing you should also hopefully notice is that this reaction that I gave you is not balanced. I did that on purpose for you to recognize that sometimes these reactions will be given to you and they are not balanced. So when we go back and look, right, we should see that um, based off the fact that we have I2 here, we need a 2 there on the silver iodide. And that would also force a 2 here, right? So now it's balanced. All right, so now let's look at what it says. It wants us to figure out stuff about this. How, how many grams of this are we going to make if we start with 17 grams of that? So what do we need? We're going to need some a couple of bits of information. Firstly, we need to go and find the molar mass of some things. So the first thing we're going to need is the molar mass of magnesium iodide and we're going to need the molar mass of silver iodide. Alright so I'll need my hand to dand a periodic table. Alright so I got my periodic table right here. So first off we got MGI2 so let's look at MGI2. MG is 24.3 one plus I2, so I need two times I, which is 126.90. Alright, so a molar mass for MGI2 is going to be 278.11 grams per mole. Alright, and then the molar mass of AGI is just going to be the silver, so that's going to be 196.57 plus the iodide, which is going to be the 126.90. All right, and that's going to give us a molar mass of 323.47 grams per mole. All right, now, based off of that information, I can look at using the 17 grams of magnesium iodide. All right now, this reaction is all based off of pretty much a mole relationship. So I'll need to convert right, grams to moles using the molar mass. I know that there are 278.11 grams of MGI2 in one mole of MGI2, all right? That allows, the way I've set this up, that allows grams of MGI2 to cancel. From there, what else do I need? Well, the whole question is all about this silver iodide here, right? How many grams of that are we gonna need? Well, now I've got a mole amount. And this reaction relates one mole of MGI2 produces two moles of silver iodide. So if I use that relationship, one mole of magnesium iodide producing two moles of silver iodide, right? The way I've set it up here so that I can cancel out my moles of magnesium iodide. All right, so that would give me the answer in moles. All right, now, what's the problem I got here? It wants a mass amount. So that's why I calculated the molar mass here. One mole of silver iodide is going to be 323.47 grams of silver iodide. That allows it to cancel. And so the answer I should get would be taking the 17, multiplying it by 2, multiplying it by 323.47, all right, then I'll divide it by the 278.11, and that gives me 39.55 grams of silver iodide. All right, so that would be my answer based off all that math. All right, next up, it wants us to figure out some stuff. It says, if you have 4.87 moles of calcium oxide 
so solid produced uh, in a reaction but how many moles of calcium carbonate were consumed so here if you recall previously when we did this this is balanced as written so everything here is a one-to-one -one mole ratio so if we had 4.87 moles of calcium oxide formed right we know that this relationship this is a one-to-one -one mole relationship so one mole of calcium oxide is produced from one mole of calcium carbonate Okay. Now also it wants to know, it wants our answer in moles, so actually this is done. We're, we're pretty much done with that. So it's 4.87 times 1 or 4.87 moles of calcium carbonate. So that one didn't take as long because it was all mole amounts. All right, number three, it says if 4.1 moles of barium hydroxide are consumed, so a reactant is consumed in the reaction, how many grams of water are produced? All right, so... <clears throat> This one has 4.1 moles of barium hydroxide, right? And then it wants to relate that to the water, right? So is this, I guess, firstly, I uh, jumped the gun here. Uh, is this balanced the way it is? And hopefully what you can see here is no, it is not. You need a 2 here and you need a 2 here, right? So um, what we see here, if we start using this 4.1 moles of barium hydroxide, is that it is a 1 to 2 mole ratio with water. So 1 mole of barium hydroxide will produce 2 moles of water. Okay, So that allows, the way I've set this up with barium hydroxide on the bottom, allows them to cancel. Now it wants to know how many grams of water, not moles of water. So what else do I need? I need the molar mass of water. So I need to take the 15 or 16, right, plus, uh, plus two of the 1.01s. So it's 2.02 .02 plus 16, so that's 1802, right? So I'm going to say one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams of water, right? And that allows me putting the mole of water on the bottom, allows that to cancel, all right? Because remember, this is just the molar mass of water. So I'm looking at saying 4.1 times 2 times 18.02. And that's going to... Oh, that's grams. Okay, I was like, this should be that many moles. All right, so that's going to be 147 point seven six grams of water that gets produced all right so all right next up it looks like this is saying if you have 97 grams of ammonium chloride all right that is consumed in the reaction how many moles of lead chloride are produced firstly is this balanced let's look the okay see here the acetate ion is not balanced on this side, so there's going to have to be a 2 there. And then the chlorines aren't balanced over here, so there should be a 2 there. So ammonium, 2 ammonium, 2 ammonium, 2 chlorine, 2 chlorine, 1 lead, 1 lead, 2 acetate, 2 acetate. All right, so now it's balanced. Okay, so it said we had 97 grams of ammonium chloride, and it wants us to go to moles of lead chloride or lead 2 chloride. So first thing we need to do is get the molar mass, right? Molar mass of ammonium chloride. What does that equal? So it's one nitrogen, four oxygens, and one chlorine. So nitrogen here is gonna be 14.01, plus a chlorine, 35.45, plus four times the hydrogens, which are 1.01. What's that give me? 53.5. So I have 53.5 grams per mole, all right? So now I can use this to convert the mass amount they gave me in the question to moles because I know that 53.5 grams of ammonium chloride is equal to one mole of ammonium chloride. Now, why do I want to convert it to mole? Because this balanced reaction is a mole relationship, right? Two moles of the ammonium chloride produces one mole of the lead 2 chloride. So I'm going to use that relationship. Two moles of ammonium chloride produces one mole of lead chloride, lead 2 chloride. Boom, boom. Now, it, here this answer would terminate in moles of lead chloride, and that's what it wants. So I can actually stop right here. So what I'm going to have to do is say 97 
all right, divide it by 53.5, and then divide that number by 2. So it's going to give me 0 0.91. I'm going to round that. So that's 0 0.91 moles of lead to chloride. All right. Okay, uh, next up, it says if you have 156 grams of copper, if that is produced, right, so we have this uh, in the reaction, how many grams of zinc are consumed? So I need to relate zinc to copper. Now let's make sure it's balanced. Two, one, so I need a two out front here. One and one, one and one, everything's good. Okay, so I just need the two there. So here it says if we had 156.5 grams of copper that's produced, right, how many grams of zinc? Well, luckily, these are the elemental forms. So I can just look on the periodic table at copper, and it's 63.55. So one mole of copper is 63.55 grams of copper. All right, and I put the grams on bottom here so I can get moles of copper. Why do I want moles of copper? Hopefully at this point you're going, duh, Dr. Nettles, because that's a mole-to-mole -mole relationship in the reaction. You see two moles of copper are produced for every one mole of zinc that is consumed. All right, boom, boom. Now, this would end my calculation at moles of zinc, but this wants grams of zinc. So I gotta go back to the periodic table and say, look, oh, the, ma the molar mass of zinc is 65.39. So one mole of zinc is 65.39 grams of zinc. All right, and I put the grams on top so that the moles here could cancel. And so what I'm looking at here is 156.5 times 65.39. Then I'm going to divide it by 63.55. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. So I should get 80.52 grams of zinc were consumed to make this. All right, so hopefully... Um, this kind of gave you a good glimpse of, you know, why we even care about balancing the equations and, you know, some of the math associated with the stoichiometry, like actually figuring out how much stuff can be made or how much stuff was consumed. All right. Um, until next time, uh, you guys stay weird. Adios.